The Farms.com Wheat Report is brought to you by Altitude FX and BASF Canada. Uh, my name is Steve Denise and I'm Vice President of Sales and Marketing with Pride Seeds. Uh, so I manage the Pride Seeds brand for Canada. I'm also the past president for the Canadian Seed Trade Association uh, and I farm. So I farm in southwestern Ontario uh, with, our, with my family. So today what I want to talk about is Bill 118, uh, C-118, which is the, the uh, growth act that's being brought forward by the federal government. And one of the things in that act, which is going to have a, a huge impact when we look at wheat yields and where they're going down the road in particular, and other crops beyond wheat, is the updating of our plant breeders uh, rights legislation to UPOV 1991 standards. So UPOV is the Union for the Protection of New Varieties. Uh, UPOV was first brought into effect back in 1978 and Canada was a signatory along with other countries from around the world. The, the goals behind it were updated in 1991 to what is commonly referred to as UPOV 91 and uh, most countries in the world have become signatories to that um, act. The country that has not to this date or one of the only countries is Canada. So other countries of the world including in Africa, including in Asia have signed on to UPOV 91 and Canada has not become a signatory yet. So what this bill does uh, will bring Canada up to speed as far as what the goals for UPOV 91 were concerned. So what does this mean for producers and how does it change things from where we were yesterday to once this is put into place. So the biggest thing that will happen is that it allows breeders uh, extended protection in terms of the investment that they made to derive a new variety. And so right now in Canada we do not have the same protection for breeders as in other parts of the world. And the impact from that is that we do not see the investment in crops like wheat or barley or other open pollinated crops happening uh, in Canada like we are seeing in other parts of the world. So in other parts of the world we're seeing wheat yields actually going up at a faster rate than what Canadian producers are allowed to experience here. In other crops such as canola, as, such as corn, such as soybeans, there are other tools in place that allow the breeder or the research company to recoup their investment and that includes traits and trade agreements that are signed with the companies and the like and those have allowed those companies to make a secure investment in breeding and research that has resulted in substantial yield gains when we look at crops like canola or corn or soybeans and that just isn't happening in crops like wheat right now. The reality is in, in wheat whether it's in eastern Canada western Canada we see a very high percentage of bin run seed uh, and the result of that is that companies cannot recoup their investment or get an adequate return on their investment in new variety research and so we're not seeing that happening. Canada also has had a, I would say, a reliance uh, because of that environment on public breeding to bring forward new varieties. The reality today is that the government has other priorities, uh, priorities in terms of health care, in terms of uh, uh, law and order, in terms of many other things. And so being able to provide everything to farmers, especially from a breeding perspective, they feel that they don't have the efficiencies in place to do that. I mean, it's no different if we look at, at wheat breeding as an example and asking the, the public uh, public investment to manage that versus if we were to ask the government to take over and design and build new tractors. I mean it's the exact same line of thinking. So what this will do will allow um, this bill will bring up, us up to UPOV 91 standards and the result of that will be that we're going to see increased investments in crop like wheat and that will allow farmers to plant new and better varieties in those different crops and see a better return on investment on their farm as well. Common concerns that are brought up by producers when we talk about coming up to UPOV 91 is I'm going to lose the right to bin run my seed. And the reality is that right is still preserved in the new legislation. Um, the, the, the primary difference is that it allows the breeder to, to ask for compensation or to look at ways for compensation that maybe could not happen today. And so does that it's going to change things overnight? No it won't. If a farmer wants to take his weed seed if he wants to uh, save it and plant it the next year. What will happen is companies will come forward with new varieties and, and they will have the, the, the extended right to say, you know, I, I am going to ask you for this in return, right? Which is either not to bin run it by signing or, or I'm going to ask uh, for, a, uh, for a compensation of some sort. Could be when I plant the seed, could be when I sell my grain. So it provides the opportunity for companies to, to seek that. And ultimately as producers we can make that decision. If I don't like what the company is asking for, I don't have to plant their variety. 
You know, every farmer has that right today and that's not going to change tomorrow. One of the questions I get is what will this mean for investment in Canada uh, when it comes to plant breeding in crops like wheat? Because uh, we are seeing that investment in crops like corn, canola and soybeans. What it means is that companies that to this point have not invested in Canada because they have basically said, Canada, you're a backwater when it comes to an environment where we want to invest. What this makes means is that we become a safe and good market to invest in so that international National breeding companies, including shareholders for the, that I work for, uh, will choose Canada as a destination for some of their investment dollars in plant breeding, and that is not happening today. And so the result of that is we're going to see an incremental, uh, incremental gain and a faster gain in uh, yield in crops like wheat compared to what we're seeing today. And as new technologies come on board, whether that be around uh, the quality of the food that can be produced from the wheat, whether it be from trade introductions, any of that, we're going to see Canada as a primary destination going forward as opposed to being uh, a country that companies are actually trying to avoid. So that's a big deal. So myself as a producer when I look at it I say I cannot move forward in crops like wheat or expect to compete with other countries around the world in particular in Europe, uh, in particular even China, in particular uh, South America and the US unless this legislation is in place because it will allow me to have access to some of the technology from breeding and technology that otherwise I'm not going to have access to. And as a farmer, I have to be competitive with my counterparts from around the world. This will help to make that happen in some of these crops. Yeah, so what? if you're looking for more information on this as a producer, uh, what I would do is go to the Canadian Seed Trade website, which is uh, um, um, canadianseed.org. Uh, and and I would there's there's a lot of information on there about uh, UPOV 91, what it means and what it doesn't mean for producers. It outlines very clearly in terms of of, of what the advantages are going forward for producers, what it does not change. Um, so that would be a good source of information. The Farms.com Wheat Report has been brought to you by Altitude FX and BASF Canada. Visit www.clearfield.ca/wheat for more cereal solutions.